put a little video on centering now. So once you've um, wedged your clay up all nicely, you're gonna, you're ready to sit down at your pottery wheel. So you want to get all your clay nice and close to you. You want to, I'm just gonna get it um, set up a wear board. You want to make sure you've got boards that you can work off easy to hand okay so what you're gonna do the first step of throwing is centering your clay so you're gonna get your ball of clay and the um, pottery wheel most likely has concentric circles in it so you're gonna ooh, Put your ball of clay as close to the middle as you can get it. Um, just kind of eyeball it. Yes, awesome. And you're also going to make sure that you've got you a bucket full of water, nice and um, clean water. Some people like to use their sludge, but I find it more difficult. So I quite like to use, I mean, not that that looks particularly clean, but, um, you know, sort of nice... Uh, non sludgy water and the throwing tools you definitely need is a sponge very important um, all of these tools you'll sort of develop favorite tools and you'll find it easier to throw with certain tools than others and um, this is just an old piece of uh, like you know warehouse mattress foam um, but you can buy special throwing sponges but I actually think they're kind of a waste of money like it's you know eight bucks for a little sponge and then you'll run through it super quick so mostly it's about the size of your sponge if you're really having trouble your sponge might be too big or too small and um, so just cut it down or find another one we've got lots of different sizes of sponges and um, you'll also need a rib I prefer working with these these flexible um, silicone ribs so uh, in the clay sheet we've got grey ones and some of these this one actually I don't know if you can see, it's like got these little ridges on it. So I've stretched it too much <laughs> and it's starting to, these little ridges are starting to create issues. So it's time for me to go and buy another rib. Um, so you need your rib, you can use <coughs> these wooden ribs and metal ribs. Um, so there's like, you know, these come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Um, you can buy these metal ribs as well. I love these for hand building. I hardly ever throw with them. I don't, uh, you know, I don't like them as much. I like these rubber ones. And you also need uh, one of these tools. So they're kind of a, a Z shape. They've got two different um, ends and that just helps you to finish off your pot <clears throat> right at the end. And you need a wire for sure. Um, once you have all your bits and bobs and you want to have them nice and close to you, you might like to have a towel as well depending on how um, wet and messy you're throwing. Lots of people like to just work with a towel or you know wear an apron or whatever. Um, so once you're started, you want your wheel going in an anti-clockwise direction as well. Um, so the electric pottery wheels often uh, will be able to go either way so you just want to make sure that your wheel is going anti-clockwise <coughs> in Japan they go clockwise but everywhere else in the world they go anti-clockwise so um, just to make sure I mean you can teach yourself clockwise I guess sure yeah why not but just make sure that you're uh, always going in the same direction or you're going to find things confusing so for the purposes of this we'll go clockwise I've got a little treadle wheel so I'm using my knee to operate the wheel but you'll probably most likely be using an electric wheel so <clears throat> once you've got your wheel going you want to get your hands nice and wet so for throwing you always want wet hands if you're starting to feel your clay snag if your clay is looking dry at all you need to get more water don't be afraid of getting more water and the first step to centering your clay is just putting your hands on it and you can see my fingers rolling around rumbling around 
under the inconsistencies of the clay. So I'm just going to wrap my hands all the way around the clay and I'm going to tuck my thumbs over the top so I'm creating this little sort of nest for the clay to sit in. <clears throat> and then with my nice wet hands I'm going to start pushing down onto the clay. So I'm keeping my arm braced <clears throat> against something. So depending on what's comfortable for you, what your body is like, you can either brace against your stomach, hard, and then come over, or you can brace against the side of your pottery wheel, you can brace against your leg, <clears throat> but you need to brace against something that's solid, that's not moving around. Because if you just do it in the air, then the clay is just going to keep combating you. So you want to brace yourself. And I'm just using this arm that's braced as a sort of steady hand that's just staying in place and really pushing into that clay. So I've got my hand wrapped around the clay and I'm just pushing in. And this hand is coming down around the other side over the top and pushing. So it's nice to speed up your wheel during the centering process. You find it easier to center with a faster wheel. You need to temper the speed of your wheel depending on what's going on. So, you're gonna push down nice and firm. And just hold your hands there for a while. Just feel that clay. If you've got any funny little inconsistencies, you just wanna like lock your hands into place and let those inconsistencies roll through your hands and even themselves out. Just spending a bit of time here can help you smooth out all sorts of issues. Okay, so you can see as my clay rolls around on the wheel, that's pretty smooth. There's no obvious lumps and bumps. There's no issues. That's all okay. If you are having trouble getting your clay to stick to the wheel head, in the very first place, if it's slipping around, often when you're on your second or third pot, there's a bit of moisture on there, um, it can be a bit of an issue. So if you're having trouble with that, just put your clay down on the wheel. I'll just cut it off and show you what to do. So, let's say your clay's slipping around on the wheel, not sticking. What you want to do is get your sponge, Wipe off the bottom of that, wipe off the bottom of that, slam it down again, and then just take your finger and run it around the base of your clay and create a little bit of suction to help that ball stick down. And you also need to focus your, particularly the pads of your thumbs, you're going to exert downward pressure as well as sideways pressure, like that. I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see. So you're wrapping your hands around the side and you're also really exerting that downward pressure. So you're getting that ball of clay to really stick down to the wheel. And if it's still slipping around, you just need to like push down harder. So if you're having a lot of trouble with your clay slipping and things like that, then you might want to properly dry off your wheel in between um, balls of clay. But you just also need to like really be, like come over the clay and push down into it. You need to get that whole ball of clay very well stuck down. So you don't want to be, you know, starting to pull up your walls and then your clay suddenly pops off the wheel. Um, but yeah, doing the suction, so really like firmly pushing into there. You can see how it's created a little clean ring. Pushing in and then pushing down and just getting that little lump of clay well stuck. So make sure that your clay is feeling good and well stuck down before you move on to the next step of centering, which is coning up. So coning up is exactly what it sounds like. It's creating a cone. So you've got sort of a little donutty, hockey pucky thing. You want to force that upwards. So before you start, just um, just make sure that the top, the top of your clay doesn't have any divots in it. I think like often people can create these little kind of, you know, 
openings in their clay, they're pushing down too hard with their thumbs or um, I don't know, there was a little crease there anyway. Before you're coating up, you want to try and iron out that little divot, otherwise you're going to end up with a weird little volcano thing that's a great place to trap air bubbles. So to just get rid of that, just push with this part of your hand, and I'm not pushing at all with my thumb, and just push, it looks like I'm pushing with my thumb, just push inwards. And you can see it kind of has pushed the clay into that little divot and got rid of it. Okay, so I'm going to start coning up. So what you're going to do is wrap your hands, your nice wet hands around the clay and <clears throat> you're creating a kind of a volcano-y shape with your clay. So you want to <clears throat> leave more space down the bottom. You're going to lean your hands in a sort of angle. And you're gonna, with your entire hand, create pressure and just squeeze that together. And use your, make sure you use your thumbs to help keep the top of that volcano that you're creating, help to keep it <clears throat> stable. So I'm just gonna push, squeezing my hands together, squeezing my hands together. At this point a lot of people will pull the clay off the wheel. So make sure that you're not squeezing too hard with your pinkies. You need to squeeze more with these parts of your hand and you're just creating a gentle, well, a firm really, firm but gentle pressure in to force the clay upwards. The clay's got nowhere to go but up. And then move your hands upwards as necessary. So you can see this creating this cone shape. I'm going to start right down at the bottom, digging my hands down, get all that clay, and I'm squeezing together and moving up, steadily up the cone of clay. So a lot of people will dig in too hard with their pinky fingers here, and then the top of the clay will just rip off. If that happens, it happens. Just um, Take it off and keep centering with the clay that you've still got on your wheel. Um, I should have put an apron on. Grubby. Okay, so once you've got a cone and you're feeling like it's looking pretty good, you want to start to cone down. So there's no kind of rule for how tall or how short your cone should be, but it should still feel very stable when you're holding it. So when you're working with larger pieces of clay, this top bit will start to like wobble around. That's not actually an issue. You're just gonna grab it and get it back into line again. Okay, so when you're feeling pretty happy with your cone, you're gonna cone down. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the top with your hand right at the top, and you're gonna put this other hand over the top of it. So you're creating like a little, um, I don't know, a little cylinder shape that that clay is going to be forced down into. If you leave a gap here and do this, then you're going to end up with like a mushroom, which is going to trap air as it comes down. So if you end up with start getting a mushroom, just tuck your hands around it and get it back into line again, and then start again. At any point during the centering process, you can always just stop and like just let the clay roll around in your hands and get it back re-centered. If you're creating inconsistencies, now's the time to iron them out. All right, so I'm gonna put my hand right at the top, this one over the top, and they're gonna wrap around so they're nice and tight. And I'm gonna use the strength from my elbow to really push that down. So I'm bracing my arm and I'm using the power of my other arm just to push right down and I'm just holding it so tight and forcing it down, okay? So this hand here is gonna be forced outwards to open as the clay <coughs> is pushing into it. But you wanna be creating resistance the whole way. You're keeping that clay nice and tight. And if you're starting to, <coughs> I mean this is okay, but if you're starting to get too mushroomy, then just squash that, take some time to just wrap your hands around the mushroom 
and just push it all back in again. Again, you're trying to avoid those air bubbles. <coughs> okay, I'm going to keep going. So my hands too won't fit around anymore, so I'm just using my hands sort of interlocked like this, and I'm forcing it downwards. And I'm pulling in with this hand, and I'm pushing down with that hand. So my hands working together, I'm going to get that clay back into the original shape that we started with. And that is centering. That's how you get your clay started and centered. Um, yes. So centering, the action of centering is again helping all those little platelets to come into line around the spiral or around the circle that the pottery wheel is making. So whereas before they would have all been like jiggity jaggedy, now they're all starting to like line themselves up smoothly interlocked. <clears throat> so having your little platelets all happy and interlocked is going to create a stronger pot at the end. It is going to, so all your walls, you know, if they're all tightly packed, um, that's creating extra compression. And then, you know, it's just going to create a stronger wall of a pot. So when you sort of smash it against the side of the sink, when you are washing the dishes, it's going to be less likely to just shatter and smash. Um, you would have noticed, I'm sure, that some pottery, like particularly things like um, very big bowls and teapots and things, sort of uh, weird shapes, um, they will have been slip cast, which is a different technique of making a pot. And slip casting doesn't compress the clay in the same way. So it's just pouring liquid clay into a plaster mold and then tipping it out again. So those platelets are just like, woo, wiggity, wiggity, in the, um, in the finished pot. So they have a lot less strength. They'll be a lot more prone to breaking from thermal shock, to just smashing and chipping if you put them into, um, you know, if you bash them against a surface. Um, and they'll feel, uh, I feel like it just feels a bit more fragile, you know. So slip cast pots are much weaker because they haven't had the same uh, compression that your wheel throw-in pots are having. And the same can be true for hand building. You want to do a lot of compression when you're hand building in order to have pots that are the same strength. Um, and because you're going to be aiming to pull your walls relatively thin and your pot, when you're throwing it, is going to be under a lot of pressure um, from stretching so quickly and so thinly, uh, you want to make sure that you've done you've got those platelets as in line as you can. So first of all, you wedge to help starting, start get them in line, and now you've done your coning up, you're coning down, your good centering, and that's got them really nicely in line. And then from now on, you're gonna pull that clay open and start stretching the walls.